Scientists use the term air pocket. Nowadays, many drivers try to save fuel, driving behind trucks at speed. However, the efficiency of this method has not been proven yet. To check if this popular fuel saving method works, we've come here to the State Research Center Nami in Dmitra. To start, we'll show you what an air pocket, in fact, looks like. To do this, it is necessary to make the surrounding air visible to the naked eye. That's easy, by the way. This usual military smoke candle will be helpful. When a car moves, it sort of cuts the approaching flow with itself, which means that behind the car, this flow will be weaker. Moving through the smoke screen, we can see that the air follows the car. This effect is referred to as an air pocket. To understand what extent it's perceptible to in practice, we've asked a professional cyclist to ride inside such an air pocket. But first of all, let's determine the maximum speed without any outside assistance. Already 20, Alex. 30. A little bit to 40. The downhill champion, Alexander Afani, accelerated his mountain bike up to 38 kilometers per hour. Now we'll try to improve the result. This time, the athlete will not ride on the side of the car, but behind it. In theory, the absence of the approaching flow is to help him move faster. But in practice, it turned out a different way. That's all left off. It's even less than the previous time. To better understand the physics of this process, we've turned to an expert in aerodynamics. The air flows around the car, basically from four sides. The biggest portion flows from above, from below and from the sides. As a result, the mixture of these two flows occurs, and turbulence becomes inverted. In other words, here there is a screen. The screen results air and he fights against it. Yes, to go faster, you need to either ride closer or take another car or increase the speed. We've decided to follow all the three pieces of advice. Open the trunk to exclude the airflow from above. Asked Alexander to ride closer and tied him to a car with a tow rope. Ready? Go! Don't forget that our cyclist is a professional athlete and the filming was made on a special site. Please don't try to repeat it. Alex, 60, 70, 80. Alex, 90. Detaching. Oh my goodness. The speed. The speed is still 90. He isn't even pedaling. Honestly, it's unbelievable. Enough, Alex. It's enough. Incredible. Stop. Honestly, no one of the filming crew expected such an effect. It's not only that the cyclist was moving faster in the absence of the approaching flow. Another flow that followed the car into the low-pressure area kind of pushed Alexander in the back. As a result, for a few minutes, Alexander was effortlessly riding at 90 km per hour. Fantastic! I still can't believe it! Alex, how do you feel? 
I feel as if somebody is pushing me in the back. So you rode something like a kilometer. You weren't even pedaling. Yes, right. It wasn't easy and didn't take any additional effort at all. It seems to me it's even harder to do it with a car. Of course, it's harder with a car, as a car is bigger than a bike. Yes, you need to come quite close to the car in front. It can lead to a serious accident. So it's not worth the cost. No, it isn't. Basically, the low-pressure area is effective, but don't try to repeat our experiment.